Hello, today is Monday, August 21st. I'm Tony Mangino from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. On our last episode of Staying Connected, I caught up with Mark Sheard on the importance of co-management and some approaches to consider in establishing best practice managed service arrangements with your MSP. One thing we want to call out is that co-management is just one aspect of making sure your managed service arrangements are as effective as possible. Another key factor is understanding the capabilities of prospective MSPs and how each matches your specific requirements for managed services. It's in this context Verizon's recent news on its collaboration with HCL Technologies is worth some discussion. Today, Mark joins me again along with one of TC2's managing directors, Ben Fox, to provide some perspective on Verizon's announcement. Mark and Ben are both leaders in our managed service practice area. So Mark, before we dig in, what's the Verizon announcement about? Thanks, Tony. I'm glad to be back. Well, perhaps the best way to approach it is to review what Verizon actually said about its new arrangement with HCL. It's a global partnership with HCL where HCL has become what Verizon is calling its primary collaborator for managed network services, so MNS services, for its enterprise customers. Here, they also state that Verizon Business will lead the sales, the solutioning and customer acquisitions, and HCL will lead post-sale implementations and then the ongoing support. The focus is for wireline services, but there are also mentions and alluding to other services. And the deal is estimated to be worth $2.1 billion over six years, so it's pretty substantial. Now, some of the assertions, if you look at it, what do you get out of this? Some of the assertions are that this tie-up will allow enterprise customers to better navigate increasingly complex operating environments. And that's Verizon's words and questions as to what that actually means. That it will do this across diverse locations, geographies, and device types. And also implying that HCL's digital native MNS platforms and customer interfaces are going to make the experience far better for those customers than Verizon can deliver on its own. And the obvious takeaway from this relates to things like SD-WAN, Secure Access Service Edge, SASE, Managed Network Services, those services Verizon aspires to sell. But if you unpick it a little bit further and you unpick the narrative, there is also a potential play on HCL's information technology and operational technologies pedigree, so IT and operational technology which suggests that Verizon's continuing desire to move up the food chain still exists you know, so that they're closer to the end user. And this has been a long-held and largely unfulfilled ambition. So clearly this is a big deal with a wide scope and looks like it's a massive change for Verizon. Yes, I think it's a very big change indeed, actually. So Verizon itself pointed out that it was at an inflection point where it needed to either overhaul its capabilities or get a leading partner, and it's obviously gone for the latter. So from our numerous customer experiences that we've had, we've really seen the challenges that Verizon has in bidding market-leading managed network services, You know, especially when compared to systems integrators such as HCL. We've really seen that Verizon has been lagging its competitions in a bunch of key areas, for example, in automation, in continual improvement, integration with customers' own tools, in providing robust service level arrangements, and of course, in pricing. So these challenges have led to some dissatisfaction for some of Verizon's existing customers and have certainly made it very hard for Verizon to successfully compete in managed network services RFPs. So this announcement from a Verizon, it seems to be, if you will, a tacit acknowledgement of all of these problems and in many ways an if you can't beat them, join them kind of approach. But I really think we shouldn't understate how profound a change this is for Verizon. You know, there is almost always a degree of using partners and subcontractors in any managed services or outsourcing arrangement. But a model where the core delivery functions are subcontracted to a third party, that really may be difficult to sell to customers. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point, Ben. I could imagine that the new arrangement may also bound the services Verizon offers or at least is able to sell. For example, it's hard to see Verizon's success in areas where they might be directly up against HCL as an alternative solution provider. Customers would have the obvious question, why potentially add margin by including Verizon when they're trying to sell the same LHCL services? So, for example, the jury is very much out on the IT and operational technology managed services I mentioned if they were to be sold via Verizon. Now, Verizon might contend that it adds value through its account and solution expertise. And I've got to say, in some cases, particularly network leaning, this could well be true. But on others, I suspect it might be hard for the end customers to justify Verizon's role at least in their minds. Of course, there may be some trade-off in the agreement with HCL that we're not privy to, we've not seen yet, which effectively gives HCL a channel to market via Verizon's customers without allowing HCL to circumvent Verizon. 
But the natural reticence from some enterprises, um, their sourcing teams or their technology teams around committing to organizations undergoing material change, which this new relationship is absolutely going to constitute material change, could also work against Verizon, at least in the short term. Spinning it around, the positive view is that if Verizon gets the organizational dynamics with HCL right, mixing Verizon's strengths and know-how with HCL's capabilities could be a force multiplier. Conversely, for the more expansive managed service deals, there's an argument that Verizon's shift here is just fulfilling writing that was on the wall for Verizon's attractiveness and competitiveness and is the reason why Verizon is having to change its strategy. Yeah, I think that's right, Mark. I think Verizon knows it needs to shift its managed network service capabilities to be successful. And I think the HCL partnership is the quickest path for Verizon to do that. It's also the path of least investment for Verizon. You know, Verizon's enterprise business has been a bit of a drag on the wider Verizon businesses for some time. And I doubt there was much appetite to invest significantly in the managed network services business to catch up with the likes of HCL and other SIs. I think it's also notable that Verizon's announcements talk to, you know, HCL leading the post-sales implementation and ongoing support, which does rather support the idea of Verizon effectively becoming a channel partner for HCL, but a very heavyweight one. But I also think that Verizon's comments about Verizon leading sales, leading solutioning and leading the customer acquisitions and letting HCL simply do all the post-sale implementations and the ongoing support, I think that's extremely aspirational from Verizon. You know, I'd be concerned that customers may not be very interested at all in the concept of Verizon fronting for services that are largely delivered by HCL. And as you said, Mark, such customers are going to ask what Verizon is bringing to the party. And I've certainly yet to hear a compelling answer to that question. So what do you see as some potential impacts on Verizon's existing managed service customers, Mark? Well, some of the announcement talks to lifecycle management and having a frictionless interface between HCL and Verizon. This obviously needs to be developed and proven. The full impact of the new arrangement will take time to become visible, but existing customers are actually more likely to directly witness those necessary changes. We might see potential dips in performance during this transition, particularly with employee transfers, which are part of this arrangement from Verizon to HGL, and the inevitable flux that this can cause. You're also going to have to see relationships reformed with all the various staff changes, whether it's in HGL, assuming Verizon roles and vice versa. Of course, the end state in terms of the quality of the managed service from HCL versus what Verizon provides today, I think it's fair to say that's very much likely to be better. But there's likely to also be unforeseen glitches that need to be worked through. When two organizations come together, all the functional and process boundaries need to be set up and no doubt refined. The company culture differences and the working approaches need to be harmonized. While the practicalities, the nuance of Verizon's aspirational model where they sell versus HCL delivering the services, that needs to evolve. For the enterprise customer, they should consider the effort it takes to bring a new managed service supplier on board and now think about doing that while the supplier itself that you might be bringing on board or is your existing supplier is actually going through a significant change itself. What was an erstwhile competitor coming now as the primary collaborator? So, Ben, we've spent all our time today talking about Verizon and no time talking about HCL. You're right. And, you know, we really should note what a big statement this is for HCL's commitment to managed network services. We've spoken here on Staying Connected in the past about HCL and other systems integrators have really become market leaders in complex managed network services at the expense of the carriers such as Verizon and others. And I think this transaction and the publicity it provides and the additional scale in managed network services it gives HCL, you know, that has the potential to give HCL significant advantages over its competition. So HCL was already a strong player in this market. And really, this only makes them stronger. You know, they're not always the right fit, but they should definitely be on the list of potential candidates for managed network services for many enterprises. Okay, so big thank you to both Ben and Mark for sharing your perspectives on the just announced collaboration between Verizon and HCL. You can reach out to Ben or Mark or any of our TC2 and LB3 colleagues to discuss the capabilities of prospective MSPs and how each matches your specific requirements for managed services. Finally, you can stay up to date with all the latest in this space by subscribing to Staying Connected, by checking out our websites, and by following us on LinkedIn.